Hey guys, what's up? It's Doc here at the Doc Talk, and today I'm joined by Urban. A little bit different than last week's episode, but I hope it's gonna be good. So this week on the Doc Talk, we're talking about violence and video games. More specifically, violent video games and having kids play them and how does it affect them. So I figured we'd start out by, since Urban and I are both over 18 or 17, I'm 17, so we can both play mature rated games legally. We talk about how we started playing mature rated games. So Urban, how old were you when you started playing mature rated games? Um, started out playing Grand Theft Auto 3 right after kindergarten, maybe about well, six-ish, maybe. Alright, so pretty young, pretty young. And I started out playing around 12 years old, playing mature rated games, but I played T-rated games when I was like six. So I had been playing shooting and violent games for about the same time, but not mature rated games. So, Urban, do you think that it affects them at all? Like, what is your opinion on this topic? Um, well, I can't say that it doesn't affect them in any way. I'm sure it does affect them in some way, but as long as the child has good parents that have good parenting values, they have good morals, they teach them right from wrong, I really don't see it as much of a problem. I agree with that statement. I feel like as long as there's good parenting that it won't be too much of a problem. Like, I actually have, um, I got all these information from ProCon.org. It's a really great website that has lots of unbiased content and news articles and stuff that gives you pros and cons between each issue. So I actually have this one thing. California passed a law, I don't know if you knew this, Urban, but California actually passed a law in 2005 that required violent video games to include an 18 label and criminalize the sale of these games to minors. But in uh, June 2007, or not June, sorry, in June 27, 2011, the Supreme Court ruled that it was uh, violated free speech, basically. So it violated the First Amendment. So they actually have tried to put laws in place to stop this. So it's obviously a big issue if the, if the state of California passed a law, right? And then the Supreme Court went on to rule against it. It's obviously a big issue. Right, Urban? Well... To be fair, I do think that California is one of the more strict states in the United States. Yeah. So, like, I can't, I can't really, I mean, I live in Hawaii, I can't really speak for that, but it's just... Yeah, okay. Now, do you personally feel that violent video games have, have affected your personality, your psyche, or anything? Um, in a way, yes. I mean, it's where I've gotten a lot of my, uh comedic shriek from no doubt but i don't think in a negative way really i think so i think what's worse is cable television to be honest that's true because now on cable television they're allowing a lot more stuff especially like very gory video or not very gory tv shows like the walking dead and the thing is if the parent is naive and doesn't have the parental controls on any kid can watch that if they have tv where they can just walk in. Like, the thing about video games is that they have to go through the parents directly to buy it, or they can't. Because they they need a legal adult. So, I have some other things from pro, um, ProCon.org I, I figured I'd share with you, and then I want you to give your thoughts on them, alright, Urban? Okay. Okay, so some pros, which is basically saying, saying that violent video games do affect children, and that should be stopped. Okay, so... Increasing reports of bullying can be partially attributed to the popularity of violent video games. In 2008, study Grand Theft Childhood reported that 60% of middle school boys who played at least one mature-rated game hit or beat up someone, compared to 39% of boys that did not play mature-rated games. So that's basically saying that people in middle school, people that had played violent video games, were beat up more people than people who didn't. And now, just looking at the statistics, that's still a lot. Think about it. 39% of people that, even that didn't play mature rated games, that's a lot of people that have beat someone up. Like, that's not good thinking about that first off. Like, the stats all around, the, across the board are not good. Well, I think what it has to do, again, I think, I do truly think that it comes right back to uh, parenting. Because... As a child, you're going to see something on the TV or in a video game. You're going to want to emulate that because you think it's cool. The par it's a parent's job to sit them down and tell them why it's not a good thing or why it is a good thing, depending on you know what, what if, it's, if it actually is a good thing or not. It all comes down to parenting, in my opinion. 
parenting, yeah, I do agree with you. Parenting is a major, major, major point of it. Um, let's let's do a con. So basically saying that this this is a supporting saying that it doesn't affect them very well. So violent juvenile crime in the United States has been declining as violent video game popularity has increased. The arrest rate for juvenile murders has fallen 71.9% between 1995 to 2008. The arrest rate for all juvenile violence crimes has declined 49.3% in the same in the same period. Video game sales have more than quadrupled. So that's basically saying that while violent video games have been getting more popular, the the arrest rate has been declining. So if you look at it through that, you can basically say, well, okay, there's more people playing violent video games and there's less people getting arrested. Well, doesn't that mean that violent video games are actually helping? Or you can just say it's a coincidence and say that it's not helping at all, but... Well, perhaps it's a bit of both. I mean, if the sales for violent video games are quadrupling and the juvenile arrest rates are declining, perhaps it could be that maybe the games are keeping the kids indoors instead. You know, we, we, we don't really know. We're not... We're, not, we're totally not any of those kids, like, at all. Totally not. I know. Totally not sitting in my room all day. Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, another thing that I want to point out is that, especially nowadays, like, with all the school shootings and stuff, school shootings have become, I feel, more prominent, at least since the news has uh, evolved. I also, I feel that a couple of factors have to do with this. One, the news, I feel like the news has rep reports more violence than it used to, if that makes sense. Like, before... The news used to be like, you know, weather and you used to cover a couple things that were locally. But now that we have such globalization or at least continentization for the U.S., I feel like we are able to portray more of these articles and events. So when school shootings happen and people find out about them and then they find out that that person played a violent video game, it, whether it be a lot or a little bit, they generally associate violent video games with the cause. The thing that I don't like about that is... Especially since there was a stat I didn't actually put it down, but it was basically saying that like 70% of kids have played a violent video game. And that just means that statistically, the chances of someone who does, that already has mental issues, that ends up playing a violent video game, the mental issues are going to be the problem in the first place, not the violent video game, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, actually. Yeah, so... That's something that I like to look at, is that since video games have become so popular and so prominent, you can't really look at something, like you can say that, just to hypothetically, you can say that, well, someone that watches TV a lot can become violent. Well, back in, say, like the 50s when TV wasn't as prominent, well, not very many people were, were using that. So you can use that as a valid study. But now when, like, almost every household has a TV, and every household at least watches some TV in the, during the week, well, then by that logic, yes, it's correct, because every single person has a TV, so someone will be violent eventually. Does that make sense? Well, see, I'd like to just add, that's a perfect example for that would be televised boxing. Televised MMA, like the UFC, that uh -huh. is, like, super, super violent, and it's, it's, not, it's not restricted to adults, I don't think, is it? Does it have, like, a, does um, it have, like, a PG rating or whatever? Depends. Uh, I don't think so. I think that um, paper, some of the stuff that's on pay-per-view, you have to be a certain age to order it. But other than that, if it's just on TV, I don't think it has a age. I don't think there's a way you cannot watch unless you put parental controls on. Right. But you see what I'm saying, right? Like it's, it's Yeah, I understand it's what you're thing. saying. It's the same thing. I, another thing that I want to look at really quickly before, because we're running out of time here, is that if you look back, say, 300 years ago, we were living a lot less. We had less of a lifespan. We, we were accustomed to things at an early age. Like, if you look back almost a thousand years, people would marry, like, girls would, girls and guys would get married when they're 13. Now, that's sacrilege, you know? We were, we were, we were adapt to worse things back then when we were younger. And now that we have these violent video games, people think that just because kids play something and see something violent, that they're going to become violent. Well, some kids enlisted in the military when they were like 12, and they killed somebody when they were that young. So, violence is everywhere. Violence cannot be stopped. It's more of the kid. It's up to the parent to teach them how to deal with things if they have trouble re dealing with um, reality versus 
video game reality. Anything else you'd like to add, Irving, before we go? Uh, nope. Nothing. I don't think. We covered quite a bit, actually. All right. Well, that's it for the Doc Talk guys today. Um, let me know what you guys thought. I really enjoyed this episode. Um, let, we get, let us know what you guys want to do for the next week. Hope you guys enjoy. Keep the can subscribe. Do all that fun thing. Sharing is caring. All the good things. Do whatever you want to do. All right. See you guys later.